Hello and welcome dear students. Today we shall be discussing about Jean Jacques Rousseau as a philosopher and his educational philosophy. After this discussion you should be able to know about the life history of Rousseau, understand the philosophy of Rousseau and understand Rousseau's educational thought with special reference to aims of education, curriculum, methods of teaching and discipline. Dear students, first of all we will discuss life history of Rousseau. Jean Jacques Rousseau was born on June 28, 1712 in Geneva, Switzerland. Nine days later, his mother, Suzanne Bernard Rousseau, died due to complications from childbirth. His father, Isaac Rousseau, was a watchmaker who often left for extended periods of time to pursue his trade. Because of his family troubles, Rousseau was raised by his aunt and uncle until he was apprenticed to an engraver at the age of 13. Three years later, he ran away to serve as the secretary to Madame Louise de Warrens, a wealthy woman who later became his lover. In 1742, he presented the Academy des Sciences with a new system of numbered musical notation that he intended to be compatible with typography. Although the Academy scornfully dismissed his system, a version of it is still used in some parts of the world. From 1743 to 1744, Rousseau served as the secretary to the French ambassador in Venice, whose government he would later critic on the social contract. After completing this job, he returned to Paris. He was there that he met Therese Levasseur, with whom he had five children. Notably, Rousseau abandoned all of his children at a hospital shortly after birth. His poor parenting received a great deal of ridicule and criticism, especially after Rousseau published Emile, which lays out theories on proper child rearing and education. While he was in Paris, Rousseau befriended Denis Diderot, a prominent French Enlightenment thinker and the organizer of an early encyclopedia. In 1742, Rousseau entered an essay competition sponsored by the Academy de Dijon. The question asked whether the development of the arts and sciences had a positive effect on morals. Rousseau won the competition and his essay, Discourse on the Arts and Sciences, garnered him significant respect and fame. In 17 54, Rousseau returned to Geneva and converted from Catholicism to Calvinism. In 1762, Rousseau published two major works, The Social Contract and Email on Education. Both books were banned in France and Switzerland because they criticized religion. As a result, Rousseau had to flee arrest and went to Moreras, Switzerland, where he received the protection of Frederick the Great Prussia. On July 2nd, 1778, Rousseau died of homerage. While taking a walk on an estate close to Paris, Rousseau was first buried on the Lee des Pupilleres in 1794. His remains were moved to the Pantheon in Paris. Now, students, 
let us discuss the philosophy of Rousseau. Rousseau is known as a revolutionary philosopher who wrote against the contemporary social and political setup, hypocrisy, artificiality, cruelty, correlation, depotism, prevalent at the time. The keynotes of his philosophy is termed naturalism. It contains his concepts of natural state, natural man, and natural civilization. Natural state is a simple forming community or state without the evils of large cities, corrupt rulers, social classes, and luxury. He believed that goodness was innate and evils as acquired. About natural man, he says, man is born free, but everywhere he is in chains. In the words of Rousseau, quote, civilized man burns, lives, and dies in a state of slavery. Natural man, according to Rousseau, is governed and directed by the laws of his own nature rather than those of social institutions. He believed the man would have been happier if he had been allowed to remain in his natural stage. He was against so-called civilization. By natural civilization, he meant the simple forming life. Rousseau says, quote, God makes all things good. Man meddles with them and they become evil. He declared, everything is good as it comes from the hands of the author of nature, but everything degenerates in the hands of man, unquote. He has given three fundamentals of the nature, considering them the best sources of education. Number one, isolation from society. The child should be isolated from the society and brought up by the laws of nature. He should not be allowed to acquire the evils of the society. Second, innate tendencies of the child. In the words of Rousseau, the innate tendencies to primitive emotions, instinctive judgment and natural instincts are more reliable basis for action than the experiences gained from the society. In this sense, education means the spontaneous development of these innate tendencies of the child. Third, contact with natural environment. The child should make contact with the natural environment that is hills, trees, plants, birds, animals, wood, stones, and physical forces. Thus, the child should be brought up in natural environment. As a result of it, he will automatically become a rational being and act according to the voice of his conscience. Students, let us discuss the educational philosophy as given by Rousseau. His educational philosophy is born out of his philosophy that is naturalism. First of all, the concept of education as given by Rousseau. For Rousseau, education does not mean merely importing information or storing knowledge. It is the development of the child's natural powers and abilities from within, according to nature, man and things. A. Education from nature. It consists in the spontaneous development of our endowment and faculties, that is the child's natural tendencies and interests. He gave it the top priority. B. Education from man. It consists in influencing our social contacts and various groups. He did not favor it at least in initial stages. C. Education from things. It consists in the acquisition of knowledge and information through contact with physical surroundings and our experience of dealing with the things. Rousseau's conviction was that education should be considered as 
the process of development into an enjoyable, rational, harmoniously balanced, useful and hence natural life. Types of education as given by Rousseau. There are two types of education as he has given. Number one, negative type of education. He wanted that the first education to the child should be given in negative. During the age of 5 to 12 years, the child should be given negative education. Rousseau held the opinion, I call negative education that which tends to perfect the organs that are the instruments of the knowledge and before giving this knowledge directly and that endeavors to prepare the way for reason by proper exercise of the sense. Following are the characteristics of negative education. Number one, time saving not favored. Rousseau said, do not save the time but lose it. By running, dancing, playing, the child will have continuous reconstruction of experiences, which is nothing but education. Second, book learning not favored. Rousseau said, reading is the curse of childhood. He hates books as they are of no value. He considers them to be the cause of child's misery and suggests a remedy for its removal by saying, by relieving school children of their courses and books, we can take away the cause of their misery. Third, formal lessons not favored. Rousseau did not believe in the efficacy of verbal lessons. He stated, get rid of the lesson and we get rid of the chief cause of their sorrow. Fourth, habit formation not favored. Rousseau holds the view, the only habit which the child should be allowed to form is to contact no habit at all. Fifth, direct moral education favored. Rousseau believed that no moral training should be imparted to the child. Let him get moral training through natural consequences. Sixth, social education not favored. He held the view that the society is corrupt and it degenerates him. So, he should be protected from its evil influences. Seventh, formal discipline not favored. Rousseau believed in discipline according to natural consequences. If the child climbs a tree, let him fall and learn not to attempt it again. Eighth, old customary procedure favored. Rousseau was dissatisfied with the prevailing conditions of the country and that is why he remarked, quote, man was once happy, now he is miserable, undo what has been done and he will be happy again. Now B, positive education. Rousseau, quote, I call positive education one that tends to form the mind prematurely and to instruct the child in the duties that belongs to man, unquote. The characteristic of positive education are, number one, stress on verbalism. Number second, stress on duty, morality and religion. Third, stress on strict discipline. Fourth, stress on social education. Fifth, emphasis on formation of habits. After discussing types of education, dear students, let us discuss the aims and objectives of education as suggested by Rousseau. Development of child's inner faculties. Rousseau says that the most important aim of education is the natural development of the child's inner faculties and powers. In his book Emile, Rousseau seeks to train Emile in the profession of living so that he may become a human being before becoming a soldier, a magistrate or a priest. 
different aims at different stages. In addition to this aim, education should be different at different stages in the life of the individual. These aims are a. Development of well-regulated freedom. During the period of infancy, that is up to five years, the aim of education is to develop a well-regulated freedom according to his capacities. b. Develop sufficient strength at childhood stage. At the childhood stage, that is from 5 to 12 years, the aim of education is to develop in the child sufficient in order to have well-regulated freedom. Rousseau's advice for this period is exercise the body, the organs, the senses, the powers as long as you can. C. Intellectual development in pre-adolescent spirit. At the boyhood stage, that is from 12 to 15 years, the aim of education is to develop the intellect of the email. Education should help in the acquisition of knowledge, which may enable him to the practical needs of the life. D. Emotional, moral and religious development during adolescence. During the fourth stage, that is from 15 to 24 years, Emil should learn to live for others and to live together in social relationships. His emotions should be sublimated. Moral and religious bias should be given to education. In short, during this stage, education should aim at emotional, moral and religious development of the Emile. Students, after these aims and objectives, let us discuss the curriculum as suggested by Rousseau. Even in framing the curriculum, Rousseau paid attention to these four stages of development which we have discussed under aims with infancy, childhood, boyhood and adolescence. A infancy stage up to five years, a feeble body makes a feeble mind. All wickedness comes from weakness. Give his body constant exercise, make it strong and healthy. During this stage of infancy, the child should be properly protected. B. Childhood stage from 5 to 12 years. Rousseau says, Childhood is the sleep of reason and the educator is not to disturb him in this sleep. Unquote. So at this stage, neither intellect nor moral or social education is to be imparted to the child. Negative education will consist of the free development of his physical organs and the exercises of his senses. C. Boyhood stage from 12 to 15 years. Physical sciences, languages, mathematics, manual work, trade, social relations, music and drawing will constitute the curriculum at this stage. Sciences will develop heuristic character and drawing will train eyes and muscles. D. Adolescent stage that is from 15 to 20 years. Rousseau laid Special stress on moral and religious education at this stage. Moral education is to be given through activities and occupations and not through lectures on ethics. Besides moral and religious education, history, geography, sex education, physical culture and aesthetics are to constitute the curriculum. Now after curriculum, let us discuss methods of teaching. Number one, learning by doing. Rousseau says, quote, teach by doing whenever you can and only for fall back upon words when doing is out of question. The child should take part in various activities and learn in natural way. Second, direct experiences. Knowledge acquired through books is second hand and easily forgotten. On the other hand, knowledge directly acquired from various learning situations is 
permanent. Third, method of individual instruction. Rousseau asserted that the teacher should properly recognize the individuality of the child and should provide individual instructions. Fourth, heuristic method. In this method, the child is placed in the position of a discoverer. He is to be given an opportunity to make experiment with the apparatus that he made himself or invented. Fifth, example is better than precept. For imparting moral education, Rousseau stated, example is better than precept. Teacher should practice morality. He should provide opportunities to practice virtue. Lectures on morality will not prove useful. Sixth, social participation. During the period of adolescence, learners should get knowledge about social relations by actually visiting places and establishing contact with the members of the community practically. Concept of discipline. Rousseau opposed imposed discipline. Leave the child free. It is only in free atmosphere that the child can develop his innate powers. He remarked, quote, allow the child to suffer the natural results of his acts, unquote. For example, the child puts his hand into fire. Let him burn his hand and learn by consequences. After this, let us discuss the role of teacher as suggested by Rousseau. Rousseau did not assign high place to the teacher. The teacher should see that the education of the pupils is the free development of their interests and motives. He should provide suitable opportunities. He should protect the child from repression, mental conflicts, and mental disorders of all kinds. After discussing the educational philosophy of Rousseau, let us discuss students a few limitations of his thought. Number one, anti-social attitude. Rousseau had no faith in the influence and goodness of the society. One of the fundamental aims of education in democratic way of life is socialization. All is not bad with the social setup. Second, little important to positive virtue. Rousseau laid stress on negative education and hence he left little scope for the inculcation of the positive virtues. Third, no higher ideals. No place for higher morality and ideals in Rousseau's educational theory, while these are a must for a dignified society. Fourth, faulty theory of discipline. Rousseau's theory of discipline through natural consequences is very dangerous and not suitable to the modern way of life, whereas modern gadgets can prove to be fatal if proper human care of the teacher is not there. Conclusion In gist, Rousseau's contribution to education has been profound. He influenced education in its organization, aims, methods, curriculum and discipline the auto-development of personality, free discipline, lack of any restraint, utilizing the senses, interests and activities of the child have influenced the modern education in many other ways. With this, we conclude our today's discussion. Hope you have understood well. Thank you.